So, today we make the seum of the Kuntres and Yonah Shalteres Achsidus, the essence of Siddus. Today is our 35th shear, 35. And we conclude with chapter 21, which is interesting because how many weeks are there? Three weeks. The three weeks. How many chapters are there? 21. Three weeks. So we're concluding the, 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 the Sefer, what we've been learning for several months today. So that's a, a Simcha, Simcha Shal Mitzvah. And uh, let's conclude, and then we'll talk. Remind me to mention when we'll start again after the break. Okay, page 103. Make a seal. Yeah, this is the seal. This is the seal. Al pikol anal, based on everything we learned earlier, yumtak mashehachnechana. It'll be sweetened. It'll be more delicious, more geschmack. Mashehachnechana v'atli la'osi mar. Why the preparation and the vessel to bring Mashiach, who have fotos hamayonos chutza dafka? It's specifically through disseminating the wellsprings outside. So in this one sentence, the Rebbe gives us what's called the marketing, the tagline. The tagline of Chabad Lubavitch in this generation is Yafutsu Maynasecha Chutza. Right, that's why we sing, Hey, Mosai, Kosimar, Likishe, Yafutsu Maynasecha Chutza. So the Rebbe says, based on what we learned before, we'll now have a better understanding why this, specifically, what is this? The study of Siddhas. And he says in the brackets, in addition to the fact, since Mashiach's revelation will be in all matter, worldly matters, until all flesh, including Lahavdil Gentiles, We'll see godliness of a male and therefore. So the preparation is to disseminate this all over and to everything. To the lowest chutza that's outside. So when they ask you, why are you guys standing on the street putting on tefillin with Jews? Or Yoyni said, why am I, is his daughter, are his daughters giving out candles? Because that's your futsal manaser chutza. The Baal Shem Tev told, Bashiach told Baal Shem Tev, when am I going to come when Kishi Futsal manaser chutza? And not in Kishi Futsal manaser in 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 Bet Shemesh in 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 Karl Bachshul. That too, chutza. You have to go out to the kibbutzim. You have to go out to Timbuktu. You have to go out to the college campuses. And you have to go to them, because they ain't coming to you. <laughs> and we all know, and we all benefited, all of us, from what the Rebbe initiated when he became Rebbe, and he taught us Hasidim, and they taught their students, as we discussed yesterday about Rabbi Yael Khan, the Chutzah, that, that's the bottom line. And Baruch Hashem, as the Friedrich Rebbe said in 1940, when he came to America, he says, I don't have a copyright. Lepavich doesn't have a copyright on Yiddishkeit. Everyone is welcome to emulate what we're doing. Okay? This is not about me, I, us. Anyone that says that is not going with the Lepavich and the Rebbe Shita. The Rebbe said so many times, I can't tell you. Say it with my name or without my name. And many times he said, don't say it in my name because they're going to object, that, you know, and they have their issues with us, with me. So get the point across. The bottom line is that it should get done. So this is not about oh, Lubavitch, Chabad. They're the ones that started this and did this. At the same time, you all know part of my work is to document as, as true as possible as, based on what I research and find the truth of the matter. So when they say that Torah Masora started the day school movement, it's a lie. It's a simple lie. 
factually. Because the Fidel Kerebbe started it in 1942. And the Fraga Fibel Mendel Love, it started in 1944, 45. So who started first? So, you know, to let people lie, Chaim Dalfa is not going to let you lie. I'm going to tell you clearly, he lies. you're a liar. Because you don't have the facts. Oh, it's not, it's Chassidim, it's not Litvox, no problem. So say that the Litvishim movement, and it's not true. Because I'm sure I go find a man to love it, was a Chassid. Today they turned him into a Litvak, but it's, a, it's a, also a lie. He was a Tzantzer Chassid, he came from Hungary. So it's also, not, also a lie. You know, uh, people make up stories, want to make themselves better, and, they, and at the same time, if Chabad's going to say that they were the first in America, it's not, oh, that, that's a lie too. There were Abonim here, and there were some Chassid Shirebbe's before. Nevertheless, the Chassid Shirebbe, with his charisma and his, his connections and everything else, he brought a, an entire new, you know, uh, energy. That's also true. But, so, it's not that I'm one-sided, you know. So, I, I'm just saying that as an aside, when we're learning about Yefutza Maynasecha Chutza, that we could say, with all honesty, that the, 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 the first group of Jews that in, involved themselves on a global level of outreach was Lubavitch. And not, you know, this was uh, by the early by Rabbi Goldstein from the Diaspora Yeshiva of Shleim Karlbach. I mean, these are facts. You know, Rabbi Aaron Cutler of Shleim was a, a, a Talmud Rabbi Aaron Cutler, but in Lakewood. And he was upset when Shleim you know, didn't continue learning and he wanted him to sit more and more. And I understand him. Because Rabbi Shleim was a, a genius mind and he could be a, a godel in Tyra. And instead he's playing a guitar. Instead he's running to Boston University to be a car of kids. Or in, or in Manhattan, in the West Side, the Karl Bach Shul, and, and you know, he starts uh, in, with groups and Columbia University. That's not Tata. Tata's Lakewood. Tata's Ponovich. Tata's Mir. Fine. But, 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 but give, give, me, give me two seconds. But, but the facts are the facts on the ground. So the, these are before my times, but I, I've studied about it and read about it and written about it, that these are the facts on the ground. And it's not about, you know, your father's better than my father, but history needs to be told with truth, and everyone can choose the path they want, and, and the rabbi they want, and the rebbe, and the godl, ba 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 you know? But, but please, let, let's know the facts. So when the rebbe writes here, the whole purpose is yefutsu minasecha chutsu. Chutzah means in the furthest corner, where it's the most dark and dim from godliness. Get there. Go there. Yes, and it has to be within halacha. You don't go on a beach with this unbelievable immodesty unless you have a special mission from a Rebbe, and we, and we know a few Lubavitcher shluchen, you know, and even that, they didn't, you know, they tried whatever they can, so they... Huh? Schwartzy. Schwartzy on, Ven on, on Venice Beach. But he didn't go, you know, trust me, I knew him. Uh, he did whatever he can to, but it was a, a crisis and people are on the beach. So he sets up on the beach a stand, but further away and does whatever he can. But that's an exception. Yeah, you, need, you need permission from, from a Rebbe, from a Rav, that's not, that's not for one to do. And the Rebbe was very careful about this and, and, and instructing his people who went out to Manhattan, you know, how to do the Mifzoyim. And I can tell you, and I've told you, and I, I want to finish now, but how as students, as 17-year-olds, 18-year-olds, I went out to do Mifzoyim on Fifth Avenue with the mitzvah tanks in the 70s. I, I, I was one of, the, one of the kids. There were very sensitive issues when we asked the woman you know, to, or a man, and sometimes they were being fresh with us, and we were simple, sincere kids from yeshiva, you know, and, 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 and they, I, 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 it's like it, it's still a, lodged in my brain a conversation that I had, um, 
I think it was a, a guy, not a girl, I think. And they asked me a question, and I had no idea what they're talking about. I don't want to say it on, you know, online. It's <laughs> but it was, at that time, it was the way people laughed at Orthodox Jews was with a certain issue of intimacy that, that they, they latched on to a, a one-liner, a one issue, and, and they like made fun of, of, of Orthodox Jews. And they asked me this question, and I, and, I, and I remember, I remember, I had no idea. I said, well, what are you talking about? I had no idea what they're talking about. Only later, later that I find out, found out when I myself prepared myself for my own marriage, what they're talking about. But this is chutzah. This is chutzah. This is the outside, where you're, you're put in a position where you're naive, because you're a yeshiva bacher, you're a yeshiva student, and you don't know what's going on in the bedroom, and all of that, and you're not, you know, hanging out with girls, and all that, and then you want to put on film with someone, and they want, and they make fun of you, and they say, so what does Torah say about ba 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 ba? And you say, what are you talking about? I have no idea what you're talking about. And you feel foolish as a 18, 17, 18 year old, like, because you, you know, as a 17, 18 year old, you want to be able to say, I was able to answer every question. I was able to beat them in a, an argument, right? And here they throw a, a curveball at you and you're like, uh, uh. <laughs> it's like, I remember how I felt like, I felt like so stupid. But that's chutzah. That's chutzah. That's outside. Let me just continue. I'll take it at the end of it. Third paragraph. When do the wellsprings, Moshe, when are they expressed? The essence, the geschmack, the, the Yiddish would say the smetana, the cream, when they extend themselves only in the outside. No, I'm sorry, when they reach the outside. Kozman, look at the fourth paragraph. As long as the wellsprings are inside, one does not have yet the expression of the true essence. And since the care of the vessel and preparation of Mashiach is, Mahusachsidis to get not the watered down Chsidis, the essence of Chsidis. It's obligatory, Moshe, Avram. It's obligatory to disseminate the essence of the wellsprings to the outside. To the extent that you transform the outside, in, in, in a quotes, chutza to the wellsprings. Right? The Las Vegas Strip becomes 770. <laughs> Hard to imagine. Hard to imagine. But that's Mashiach. Shall you them is batem mahusa mayonos? This expresses the essence of the mayonos. The oz osimar do malke Mashiach, and that's when Mashiach arrives. Loshan Rabbeinu Azokin, and in the language of the Alter Rebbe, quote, Oz is dachar gashmius, then the physical matter will refine itself. Hainu sheyia gashmius, Yoyinu said, there'll be gashmius. Elo, she is dachar chaguf ve'oylom. The world, and our, our body and the world will become refined. Yoyer oyer Hashem li Yisrael bli shum levush. The light of God will illuminate without any garment. And the advantage the, from the, of the advantage of the eminent of the imminence of uh, of the, radi the the reflection that God gives to Jews, it will illuminate the darkness. Of the nations that we are in darkness, Gam King Kidrsiv, as it says in the Posik, 
Kol basar yachtov, all flesh, not just Jews, but also goyim lahavdu together yachtov. Kol, next page one hundred five. Yoshev, Yoshev, Tevel, Atzecha, all inhabitants of the world will be inspired vis-a-vis Mashiach. Umevuer, umevayer, shes hine tachlus hashlemas azet, and it's explained that this ultimate completion and perfection shall yemais Mashiach of the messianic days utchias amesim and of the resurrection of the dead. Tolui be my seinu vavoyaseinu depends on our actions, Avram, and our service, vavodaseinu. When calls manj meshach galuch right now, the time of galus, a day or two or three before Tisha B'av, we need to ins- make the world light, light up the world. Ki goy ha goyim schar mitzvah ya mitzvah v'atzvah, which we discussed the. the the, what causes the reward of a mitzvah is the mitzvah itself. Moshe, when you go out on Tisha B'av and you go visit someone who might be shut in and you bring some joy to them. So you did a mitzvah called Bikr Chaylen. You visited someone, let's say, not well. Or uh, if, uh, if this are still sitting shiva, right? Another mitzvah, right? What's the reward of that mitzvah? Sometimes we know, sometimes we don't know. But the Alter Rebbe teaches is ki agoyde mitzvah, schar mitzvah, he mitzvah atzvah. What will be the reward when Mashiach will come? We'll see how that mitzvah itself brought energy into the world and into your life. Now you say, I did something nice. I did something good. I did something holy. But, but what's accomplished? We don't see it. We don't know. What we know is, I made someone happy. The downtrodden is uplifted when someone comes to them and talks to them and just says hello and how are you and holds their hand. Yesterday, someone sent me a note that they learned from my book all about Rabbi Yoel, and they thanked me. And I said to the person, and I, oh, and the person, I, I wanted to uh, hope he might do a program, and, and the person said he doesn't know if he can commit himself because he has uh, depression. And he, and, he, and, he, and he spoke his heart out on the, on the communication, in the email. So I said to him, the note you sent me about learning who Rabbi Yoel was and what he did and etc. is Gavaldic and only you could have done that and you did that. So you made my work important and, and, and you made me happy and you made me want to continue writing more etc. etc. And, and, he, and, he, and he called back and he says, Rabbi Dolphin, you make me feel so good. And he said, I really, really, you made me feel important. He, he's, about, he's struggling with depression, a bipolar, you know, serious issues. I, I know him, he's not married. It's difficult. And he's, he can learn, and he's from Chabadnik, but he has a mental health issue. So, what we see is there was this communication and these results, everything I shared with you, right? But can we, do we understand? Can I tell you? I know that because of that, God sent down a certain energy into the world and into my life that this and this will happen. No. <laughs> that's it. We, that's not revealed to us. It says the Alter Rebbe, Kishar Mitzvah, Mitzvah Atzvah. When you do a mitzvah, the mitzvah shines. You don't need something else. And those, when you and I do a job and we get paid for the job, the work 
Yoni, and the pay is two separate things. So really, I'm not interested in working. I need one thing, I need the pay. I need the, the, the for my family. It's like, Moshe, you love your art, but ima- so it's like, I'm gonna do art because I'm an artist, and this, my soul is there, whether or not I get paid. I mean, that's a, you know, during the 60s and 70s, we had the, you know, the counter, that was the hippie movement, the counter, the, like, you know, just do it for the cause. And I told you, even in Chabad, in those days, there was no such thing as charging. We gave you free twillin. Here, free twillin. Free mezuzahs. Everything was free. I, I still remember those days from the 70s. Then, you know, the, everything's becoming expensive and everything's informal, and we start charging minimal. There's a, a first rate twillin, second rate twillin, these are called. But in the sick, Rabbi Kunin of Los Angeles, you know, when, when I was there in Yeshiva in 82, we were $17 million in debt. Why? Because from the 1965 on, he was giving away free twillin and free food at UCLA Chabad House, the first Chabad House. And he was like a, like a mad drunk, spending money on Mifzoyim, on outreach, literally. Opening Chabad houses, paying, paying. It was, yeah, very nice. It catches up to you. So now, so what I'm saying, Moshe, is Schar Mitzvah Mitzvah, is it's like you, you, you draw your art because you love your work and you don't think about pay or, or not pay. Am I going to make money from this piece of art? Like now, right? I'm, I'm thinking about what to write. I have some time now because I have a break now. So on one end, I want to, I'm thinking maybe I, there's a book that I wrote years ago called To Be Lubavitch, just like To Be a Jew. Then I wrote To Be Hasidic. Then I wrote To Be Lubavitch. But the To Be Lubavitch book was soft cover and, you know, I, I thought I would redo it. Right? And then I'm saying to myself, wait a second, wait a second. Is this really what the world needs? Or is this, you know, maybe a few individuals um, and a little more? Does, is, does the Jewish world need it to, to know about what it means to be a Lubavitch? They don't, they're not Lubavitch, they don't want to be Lubavitch. Maybe I should do a work that's larger and greater and more inclusive, right? So these type of calculations, it's like Moshe, what art should I draw now? Should I draw a piece of art that talks to my soul and I don't care who appreciates it or doesn't appreciate it, but it's my fulfillment? Or, no, no, I'm going to draw now something that will be special and that at the end it will sell and I'll, and I'll make Parnassah from it. The Schar Mitzvah Mitzvah means you do a mitzvah now for the sake of the mitzvah. When Mashiach will come, you'll see, we will see how this mitzvah inspires us. Look, the last line. The Gula Amitis Vashlema. All of this will be this way through the, the true and complete revel, uh, redemption, the cut of Mamish, very speedily. Yaini, what did you want to say earlier? So I, I, I wanted to ask, no, listen, two things. First of all, I think that if anybody disputes that Chabad was the forefront, you know, the leader and, and the father of, of, of Kirov, you know, it's, it, it's, it's not true. I mean, it's, it's very obvious. I don't think anybody, if anyone disputes it, there's got a serious problem. But I'm saying, you know, I don't know all the details and the politics, but what I did hear is that Rav Schleimer wanted to open up a Chabad house in Vegas, and he wanted to open up a Chabad house in San Francisco, when there was no when there was no Chabad there at all, and he went to the Rebbe, and the Rebbe told him he doesn't want him to go there. It's not you know the place to go because what you said the beach problem or you know the issues with outside influences. My question is though, is is that what you think? You think is that what the Rebbe was was telling him? Because now we know Vegas is one of the biggest Chabad communities in the world. We're huge. San Francisco never went, which was interesting. With Mamish, a cursed place, there is a Chabad there, but I've been there and it's Mamish, very schwach. But Vegas, is, it's huge. It's the fastest growing Orthodox community in America. So my question is, is that why was the Rebbe, why did the Rebbe 
against him opening up that. That's, okay, that's so, I'm well, uh, two things. One thing is uh, your facts are wrong. As far as I know, so as far as I know, the conversation was not about uh, Vegas. The conversation was, I think, about Manhattan. And it was in the early 50s. And he wanted to, he and Zalman Schechter together wanted to open up what today would call, they would call a Chabad house, okay? That's what I heard and even maybe read, read about. And I think that either Shleima or Zalman even said it, said it themselves. So I don't believe it was about, about Vegas, for sure it wasn't. It's not even a question. And San Francisco, uh, it wasn't either, because when he, he opened up the House of Love and Prayer in the late 60s, and uh, he didn't ask the Rebbe that he was already not asking the Rebbe those type of things. So the dating is wrong. It was in the early 50s, 51, 52, very early. And at that time, the Rebbe and also his... I would say more his secretary, Rabbi Chadikov. <coughs> Chadikov was the individual who was in charge of Chabad houses and sending out and all of that. And if Chadikov told the Rebbe, I don't think this should be right now, normally the Rebbe would listen and, and approve. And, and that's the way it worked for years. <coughs> Rabbi Chadikov was a he was born in Russia, but he, you know, was raised in Riga. He was of a certain mentality, and he and <laughs> Shloim's parents, Shloim's parents, didn't get along well. Uh, I wrote about this in my book. It had to do with finances. You know, Shloim was money meant nothing to it. <laughs> but to his parents, they said. How is my how 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 is he supposed to get from Boston to New York on the bus when he doesn't have money for it? So the answer is you're supposed to pay him because you're asking to go down to Boston University to talk to the college students. And Rabbi Chadikov writes back, I'm, "Of course we're going to pay him. Where is the receipt?" Ha ha ha! Karl Bach is going to hold on to a receipt. You gotta be crazy. As soon as he got the receipt, he crumbled it up and he spit it out as a spitball. Well, with Rabbi Chadikov, that did not work. No receipt, no money. But I went down for you. Well, you knew when I told you I want a receipt. I gotta count, have accountability for tzedakah money. And it wasn't like you against me. It was just two different styles. But Shlema's parents were very upset. Like, they understood, they were German Jews, they understood Chadakov, they understood him. But at the same time, come on, give the guy a break. So you have to know that there was a relationship between Rabbi Chadakov and Shlema's parents. That's number one. Number two, this was at the very beginning, Mamish at the beginning, where there weren't Chabad houses yet. So even a place like Manhattan, it was a new idea. And they weren't up to that yet. In other words, at that point, the idea of sending Shloyma and Zalman uh, and others at, a little later to college campus became acceptable. You have to understand where he's coming from. What do you mean you're going to a college campus with a beard, a rabbi with a beard, with boys and girls who are living a sin and smoking, you know, dope and, like, what are you doing? It's just not, the whole culture of orthodoxy of any kind couldn't relate to this. This was a chidush. 1951, 52, 53, those years. So, to go and now make a, a house or a storefront, I think it was a storefront actually, where we're going to encourage everyone to come in. In the eyes of Chadikov, 
this is a breeding ground for sin. As the years went, so therefore he told tells the Rebbe, my opinion, and you're the Rebbe, you can is don't do that. I'm telling you the way I see it. Uh, it I haven't seen this written, I haven't heard, but I from putting the whole picture together. It's my one man's opinion, you could take it or leave it. As years went on, and the Rebbe in the 50s, those 10 years, he laid the groundwork for Chabad to understand what he wants and what the world needs. Today, they started to open more. And then in the 60s, they started to send out Shluchim. Okay. But they were very strict with separation of men and women. And, and, I don't very strict, but I'm telling you, there were there were I, I know I know the guys that went out. These were frummies, you know. You know, Shleima and Zalman and and didn't keep to those rules, and that's why the Rebbe said, "I can't, I you can't represent us anymore because this is our system, and 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 if you want to do it different, do it different, but we can't." We can't, can't be under our banner, and that's where there was a kind of a parting of ways in this issue, in this one issue. I, I make that clear. In this one issue, it doesn't mean that Shleima and Zalman didn't keep being chassidim of the Rebbe. They did, but in this issue, they they it was a, a a departure. So then came the 70s and the 80s, and I remember you. And you talk about Las Vegas. I. Was in Reno, Nevada. I again. I was. I was the Chabad Shliach in Marin County, which is across the Golden Gate Bridge, in San Francisco, and to the north is Marin County, separated by what's called the Golden Gate Bridge. It's called. It's called the North Bay. I was the Shliach there. The Rebbe sent my wife and I there in 1984 to open up a Chabad house. There were a group of Balabatim. They wanted the Bab. It's the whole story. So. So, so I went up at, in the 80s, in the mid to late 80s, to, to Reno, Nevada. I mean, I remember I, had a, I knew someone in San Francisco who had a timeshare in Lake Tahoe. And he said, you know, I had my, my son and my daughter, who were, you know, a growing young couple, a couple. He says, come, come up, it's good. And meanwhile, I tried to make a Shabbaton, I tried, you know, whatever. It was beautiful and from there I said let me go to Reno Nevada because I heard there was some wealthy Iranian Jews that owned property there and they were Iranian so I felt that maybe we can maybe get a Chabad house there okay and I went to Reno I came back and I contacted my boss Rabbi Kunin and I told him I made contacts with this and that and that and I think the place is right for a Chabad house. And Rabbi Kuna said to me, no way, it's Nevada. So I said, Nevada? I said, it's Las Vegas. I said, no, it's not. It's the, it's the north. Las Vegas, I think, is in the south. It's six, seven, eight hours away. Like, what are you talking about? It's gorgeous there, nature. It's clean, there's no schmutz, you know what I mean? It's not Las Vegas. He says, I have uh, instructions from the Rebbe and Rabbi Chadikov, because he said I wanted to open up Chabad house in Las, Ve in that, in Las Vegas, and Rabbi Chadikov said, no way. So he told me, Dolphin, get your hands and your mind off Reno. Out, go back to Marin County. I didn't want to move there. That wasn't... But, you know, maybe bring another shliach. It's a personal story. Most people, most Lubavitchers don't know this, what I'm sharing with you. This was in the late 80s. Then in the 90s, actually, my brother's brother-in-law becomes a shliach in Las Vegas. I said, what? Under Rabbi Kunin? They got permission from Rabbi Chadikov and the Rebbe. What changed on the ground? I don't know. But now, Yoini, 
2022, we see what changed on the ground. Because outside of the strip and the schmutz and all that, it's a blossoming Jewish community. So, Rabbi Chadikov and the Rebbe had the foresight in the 90s, in the early 90s, 90, 90, 90, like that, I think 1990 or so, 89, 90. At that time, they finally gave permission to Kunin to find someone to open up Chabad. So what I'm showing you is a progression, starting from the 50s till 1990, that it took 40 years or so to authorize a Chabad house in an area which was known. And that's really, I think, if you ask why were, was, were they against Reno? Why were, McKinnon was against it because uh, he, he had the message, Nevada, no shliach to Nevada. You, you have to also understand, Rabbi Chadikov didn't go to Nevada. You know, he heard about it, but the, for him to go say, oh, Reno is there, and Las Vegas is there, and here it's disgusting, and here it's beautiful. You know, it's, it's what a, what is a Jew in Flatbush and in Geula going to say if they hear Chabad opened the Chabad house in Nevada? The first thing that's going to come to their mind is, oh, the Babiches are now on the strip. Right? And these things meant everything to the Rebbe and Rebbe Chadikov. It might they, Some might not know this or tell you this, but to them, the Rebbe was so careful not to create these type of bad vibes and bad, you know, news. I'll give you an example. In, New, in Mexico, 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 they wanted a Lubavitch Shliach years ago. I'm talking about in the 50s. And Rabbi Chadikov and the Rebbe said no. Why? Because it's going to make machloikis. Because there's already an established Orthodox community. How do you like that? And he did not let for years a Chabad, even though it's going to be a Chabad house, not a Chabad shul. So what I'm saying is that the word on the street, you're opening up a Chabad house in, in, in Vegas, forget it. Forget it. In, in Nevada. So that's why it took all this time. I, I hope what I told you now clarifies to you the, the issue that you asked me about. Anyone else have it? You're welcome. I know it was entertaining too, so. <laughs> Maisha, you want to say something or ask? No? Yes, Yonison. Go ahead. Yonison is one of the old soldiers. Old soldiers. Yourself, and they'll and they'll see you as a yid who's a chassid and someone who learns gemara and the yid of shemayim. Trust me, they'll melt away. Don't worry, don't worry. My Moshe does it every day in in in, in Eish Kodesh. You know, yeah, he's also surrounded. He's not surrounded by misnadim, but you know, people are more oriented towards the literature, and you just be yourself, and people start seeing. There's, there's something here, you know? Anyway, Hevra, um, the next three or so weeks, uh, we have a break. Every year we do that uh, for the three weeks. Uh, 
to Yulim and everything. And I think this year it's about when August 29th. When, who has a calendar over there? When is uh, Rosh Chodesh? Uh, is it on a Sunday this year? When is it? Sunday? When? It's on Shabbos and Sunday. So what's the date Monday? Monday is the 29th. The 29th. So believe, believe, believe that there, uh, right? Everyone will be back by then. The the, the, the yeshiva start by then, right? The pro, every, is that right or no wrong? Yeah. 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 Okay. So for for now, I mean, if you know, if there's a change a day or so, whatever, I'll let you know. Uh, you guys, let me know. But um, let, let's uh, let's be Kovea, uh that Monday to learn, and I'll let you know what we're going to learn. We're probably going to go back to the, our, the, the, the three-volume set, because uh, we haven't really tackled the discourses there in the third volume of the Sefer, and I do, uh, one of the reasons I fit, wanted to finish and finish Baruch Hashem, made to see him on, is because you could say you learned the whole Sefer, if you, whether you understood all of it, a little bit, you finished something, and now you can go back to it, you own it, it's yours, you, you know what I'm saying. And I do encourage you, please, when you have time, look at the footnotes and ask me. I'm always available to, to answer and clarify. Um, everyone should stay safe uh, during these three weeks, uh, during the, the, the vacation to Yulim. And wherever you go, take a pair of film with you and uh, take candles with you. Uh, and enjoy your, your time your you live and with your family and children and grandchildren at the same time remember that we have the chutzah and it's all there's it's all, it's plenty of chutzah <laughs> there's plenty of chutzah there uh, so um, you know and regarding uh, Tisha B'Av the, the Svarim say and the Tzadikim when Tisha B'Av comes out on Shabbos like it is this year they say, Kivin the itche, itche. Since it's been pushed off, it should be permanently pushed off. And, interest, and, int and interesting, it says in the Gemara, Mashiach is born on Tishabab. So he'll be born this Shabbos, a day before we have, uh, the night, you know, we, before we have to fast. And uh, Shabbos, you have to start fasting at night. So uh, the Rebbe was very much that you should make the Shabbos, you know, Meaningful and 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 also besimcha. In other words, whatever halo, Shabbos bechlal, you're not allowed to mourn publicly, so we don't do that. But uh, the tnuah sanefish, the, the you know, it's Shabbos and tiny Shabbos and everything else, together with whatever the halachas are, we do. And um, you all know the halachas of learning before chatzos and after chatzos and, 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 and all of that, uh, I believe, applies. And, and the chayenu and the dvar malchus and the different svarim uh, and the handouts and online, you have uh, the different minhagim that's uh, relevant. And uh, we'll stay in touch. So I to everyone. Have a great Shabbos and only now. Mashiach now. Take care. Love you all. Bye-bye. Take care.